Okay, so here we go. I have everything laid out, as you can see. Everything's nice and beautiful, cleaned up, ready to go. Got the engine cases, got the new pistons, new, new chains, cleaned up cams. Uh, rods are all cleaned up, ready to go. As you recall in a previous video, I installed that one piston. Got all the new uh, rod and main bearings here. There's one of the new ones there. The head is all completely rebuilt, new valve seals and everything. All valve seats have been all done. So the head's ready to go uh, from the machine shop. <clears throat> There's the gasket set. Here's the bottom case, the oil pump, the screen, the crank, everything's ready to go. So let's get at it. So now that brings us to the gaskets. Now there's really two big companies out there that sell gasket kits for the CBX and a lot of the other vintage bikes. One of them is this NE brand. Uh, I believe it's Chinese, but the gaskets seem to be fine. I've, I've worked with them before and uh, they all seem to be good. So um, if you're a little uncomfortable about it, you know, you could at least get a Honda head gasket, which sometimes that's what I do or whatever. But in my opinion, the head gasket is one of the most important uh, gaskets. The other brand is this uh, Vesera. And it's Japanese, it's from Japan. So, you know, if you're uncomfortable with the Chinese product, then the Japanese product is, is always gonna be good too. But like I said, I've used both and I don't have a problem with either one really. Now, as an interesting point, I actually have an OEM vintage CBX gasket kit here from back in the day. And I'm sure that this was uh, from the 70s when the bikes were new. But I obtained this on a, on a, in a parts lot that I bought from an actual closed dealership. And these are original vintage Honda gaskets, which I just love it. And I can't bring myself to use them because these are no longer available. They're totally out of production. Honda does not sell them like this anymore. They sell individual gaskets, but they don't sell them like this anymore. And they used to, they used to have, um, well, it looks like I've got two of the same here. But anyway, they had, a, they had an A and a B set. And I thought that the, both these were A and B, but it looks like I've only got the two Bs. But anyway, there's, a, there's another, part to this, uh, the A part, which I think has, you know, the upper, the upper part of the engine. This looks like it's the, uh, the lower part, the transmission and the, and the crankcase. But anyway, I just thought it was kind of interesting to show you this vintage OEM gasket set. So now I just opened up the, uh, the NE, uh, gasket set, the Chinese set, um, and I pulled out the head gasket, and this, this head gasket right here is an actual Honda OEM gasket. You can see the part number there. And it's unopened, um, but you know, I'm comparing the two, and I tell you, they are both the same quality. So I don't think, I don't think you would have any problem using the Chinese gasket set. I mean, th this gasket, head gasket, is really every bit the quality that this one is here. So I don't think you would have any problem at all using either one. So I wanted to go over also the, uh, the cam chains and the primary chain. It's, it's kind of interesting. I've got all three brand new chains, okay? So the top chain in each one of these is the old one that I took out of the engine. 
and the bottom one is the new one. Now I've got them laid out here and obviously I haven't measured them precisely, but I tell you what, I see virtually no difference in any of these as far as the length is concerned. And it just shows you the quality of the Honda OEM stuff. I, I mean, this engine was so battered and misused, obviously, and you saw it in previous videos, and yet these chains seem to me they're perfectly surface, serviceable. But I'm not gonna take a chance just because of the condition of the engine. But it just shows you, you know, how well made these chains are. So anyway, I am gonna use the new chains, obviously. But I tell you, I, I don't think I would have a problem using the old ones in some other engines. So uh, just an in interesting observation. Other than, like I said before in a previous video about the flexibility of this primary chain, how that just kind of stays together and this one kind of snaps back, you know. It, it's, uh, there is a difference there in the primary chain. So maybe this one is a little bit weaker, but I don't know, it's, it's, hard, to, it's hard to say. So one of the first things that you have to do when you do the reassembly process is if you've torn the engine down to the bare cases like I have here, um, with the exception of the shift drum and so on, which I felt was in good condition and I left that. But um, anyway, the first thing that you have to do is install the oil pump. So I'm gonna be installing the oil pump here in, in, in a minute. And after the oil pump is installed, what I do is I go ahead and, and, and install the oil pan uh, on here. And the reason I do that is because that way I can flip the engine over and I can, I can fully lubricate and oil all the parts as I'm putting them back in. And then that way the oil doesn't leak out of the uh, cases. So, um, so the first thing you have to do is you have to make sure that all of the gasket surfaces are very clean and shiny, just like I have here. And especially on the oil pan because it, it actually doesn't really have a gasket like you normally have. It's got, a, it's got like an O-ring on it that goes in this slot right here. So um, the, the more important that the surface be nice and clean and even without any gasket material left on there or anything. So, so one thing you have to remember when you reinstall the oil pump is there are a couple of O-rings that you have to remember to reinstall. And it's basically these two O-rings right here. So they have the the uh, the locating studs there with with the two o-rings and then also the gasket that goes at the end of the pickup tube so now the gasket set unfortunately does not have either the o-rings or the gasket so i've had to actually make a gasket for the uh, pickup tube and I'm going to see if I have a couple of o-rings that will work on the oil pump okay so I've located a couple of o-rings that will work and so I've got the uh, o-rings in place and now I'm ready to uh, install the oil pump
So there it is in place, and now I have to uh, bolt it from the other side along with the uh, pickup tube. So now after you've got the oil pump in, you have to make sure that all of the uh, O-rings and everything are ready to go in. Uh, also, this little piece here, which is really important because this is not shown in the parts manual or the shop manual. Uh, it is, uh, I don't know, somewhat of a spacer that goes in right here and I'll show you so basically you've got you've got this with a hole in it here for oil to pass through because the oil comes up from the pump up this channel through this and then you've got this kind of plastic and rubber washer, if you will. And then you've got a little screen here. And it sets in there just like that. So then when the, when the top case is installed, this allows the oil, which is circulating inside the crankcase here, to go from, from the crankcase here into where the alternator goes. And it goes right here in this hole. So I think the, the screen, allow it, you know, it allows the oil to go down inside here and into the alternator. So the screen is, is there to catch any debris that might be in the engine so it doesn't get into the alternator. So it's kind of a trick little setup. And again, it's not in any of the shop manual, parts manual, or anything. So be aware of that. So now we're ready to put in the uh, main bearings for the crankshaft. And as you can see here, I've got, I've got the cases all ready to go. You know, I've got I've got the uh, surfaces all wire brushed and, and uh, scotch brighted to make them nice and smooth and clean. And then uh, I've got the old bearings out. And you want to make sure that this is dry as a bone right here. Same with the, with the journals on the bottom case. You want them dry, dry, dry. You don't want any oil or anything on there because once the bearing goes in there, you want them to be dry. If you put oil there, you might spin a bearing and you sure don't want that. So you want to put them in there dry. 
Now I've got the new bearings here. And if you remember from a previous video, I needed all green color code on the bearings except for this number six cylinder, which is brown. And I've already got those bearings in there so I don't get them mixed up and I have them in the right location because it's, it's easy to get confused <laughs> as to where number one and number six is. So uh, I went ahead and installed the, uh, the brown one there. So basically, these are known as crush bearings and you just have to make sure that you line up this tab with, with this cut out here and you also want to make sure that the oil hole lines up with the oil hole in the case and if you'll notice the hole is a little offset from the center so it's pretty foolproof really and you basically just make sure that tab is lined up and then you just kind of press it in it's kind of hard to do with one hand but Let me uh, mount the camera. Okay, so like I said, you just take and you line up that tab and you just kind of press it in place. Just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do them all here. And then we'll look at it. Okay, so now I have all the bearings in, and again, it only takes a couple minutes to do that. So once you get the hang of it, again, you just want to make sure that the holes are lined up with the holes in the, in the uh, case. Because the oil comes up through this hole and into this uh, ridge and lubricates everything so or the lubricates the bearings so anyway all those are in and so now we can uh, go ahead and install the crankshaft so the first thing you want to make sure is that you use assembly lube now I've got some of this Bell Ray assembly lube uh, but there's a lot of different types out there um, anyway uh, it's essential that you use this assembly lube to uh, put an engine together anywhere where there's uh, going to be friction. You know, for the first startup of the engine, you want to be able to have full, uh, you know, lubrication. Sorry, I was looking for the word. You want to have full lubrication when you first start the engine up. So it's really good to use assembly lube. And you just kind of brush it on there lightly. And you want to do it to both case covers or both cases. So just like the previous video where I took the crankshaft out of the cases, you put it back in the same way you took it out, which means we have to attach our primary and cam chain 
to the crankshaft. And you want to use the long cam chain. So that's it for this video. Uh, we got the uh, crankshaft in, as you can see, and so tomorrow I will continue on with the assembly process. Uh, I may have to rebuild the uh, starter clutch. I'm not sure, so I may have to order some parts for that. So uh, I'm going to check that tomorrow and see. But in the meantime, I'll go ahead and install the uh, pistons and the rods. Um, and whatever else that I can do uh, short of the starter clutch if I have to put that in. So um, anyway, thank you for watching. And again, as always, please subscribe. It really helps support the channel and share it and comment. I, ex I uh, invite all comments and respond to all of them. Thank you very much for watching.